In this video, we will see that how we can create a relational database uh, with our service-based database file and uh, how we can update our uh, EDMX uh, which is ADU.NET and how these classes, appointments, doctor and the patient are generated. And we see that once the data is normalized, which means that we have a doctor ID and the patient ID, which means that we are not replicating, we are reducing the redundancy and uh, we are normalizing and the ID is only referred over here and we have a navigation properties. And see that how we can display the appointments along with the doctor detail and along with the patient detail as well which is actually part of this patient entity and the doctor entity. So let's see how we can do all of this and how we can use the joins in link. So previously we talked about and uh, developed a small application having uh, a database and a single uh, entity in that database and uh, perform basic crude operations in which we perform the add operation, we perform the view operation where we are loading all the database. We also perform the uh, update operation as well and the delete operation. So let's talk about what about if I modify the database. So let's assume that I go and open table definition and I say that this field or the type of field I change the type of field or maybe I add another field let's say for example age let's say in integer and uh, then I update this database so database has been updated completely and uh, in my EDMX which is ADO.NET uh, this table is not or this class has not been updated which is uh, automatically generated over here so it has no age field which is of type integer so if I modify the database I definitely need to update the model so I can update the model if I right click on the surface and I update model from the database and I want to refresh this uh, doctor and you see that age has been included in this model now and uh, now this doctor class must have the age I need to save you see this static over here so I need to first save this so after this saving you see that we have age of type integer and uh, definitely if I go and add some data because it's nullable so it was not a problem to have it, have it as an empty so if I add some data and I run my application Definitely when we need to add a new doctor, I need to provide a, uh, an age field so that user can input that over here. So we have name, spe specialization and qualification but we don't have age over here. So but if I load doctors because I was just directly uh, using the item source and assigning so age is automatically here and all the fields that are in this uh, entity they are over here and uh, but if I go and update the doctor I don't have age over because I did not add over there um, to do that I can easily just modify my code and add a new field let's assume that if I add it some field uh, this is my update doctor and I need to have another field which is age and also we need to display that field so let's uh, do that quickly so I will just open this XAML and uh, I will add another field that is age 
so uh, now I can uh, update the age and display the age with the with with a small modification so that when I load the uh, object I need to display the age as well so this dot txt age dot text is equal to d dot h and similarly when I uh, that is integer so I need to convert into a string so that is also another thing is that when we are storing because when we uh, get the text through the text property that returns a string which means that we need to convert the, that as well and similarly if we modify we modify the age which is of type integer and we get that age through the age text uh, property and I can use multiple ways to convert this uh, I can use in dot parse but that's not safe because there is a possibility that user provide a text input rather than uh, an integer value but for now just to see the database transactions I can just use it in dot parse so if I select a doctor we have an age over here and if I update this from 40 to 45 and uh, this age has been updated over here and if I rerun the application we can see that the age is changed and it's 45 so that's how we can update the database and then after updating the database uh, we need to update with the help of uh, update uh, model from the database and then I need to go to refresh and I, I want to refresh that uh, specific uh, table in that so that's how we can do this let's move on and create another database and uh, we make our database a bit complex so I will uh, add another table and uh, I will call it a uh, table for the patient and the uh, patient would have a name that can be a watcher let's say 50 and might have a contact number and uh, let's assume address and most of the time they also have age normally date of birth is the most appropriate field but uh, let's continue so I just update and update database so because I'm creating a, another single isolated entity uh, that must not be a problem for updating the database and uh, if I refresh this now and we have a patient so I will go and manage the some record so let's say for example contact is let's say some contact dummy contact and uh, let's say house and age is no row was updated because uh, I am not providing the primary key and if you remember uh, we normally make it identity column so uh, for now I will just provide uh, a primary key over here but it's hard to manage this primary key uniquely because I am not providing through the user input and system is not generating it so I want this database to manage this primary key so in the patient I will just go and right click into the properties and I just want to go and uh, make it as uh, identity specification <coughs> and I will make it true and uh, increment by one and I will update this so it's updated successfully and if I come over here and now if I refresh now I cannot provide this uh, primary key over here and 
and uh, let's add some other so this is managed by the database now <coughs> so uh, we have two tables over here and uh, I'll create another table which is a third table for the appointments because in appointments I want to make a relationship between the uh, doctor and the patient so that I must know that which doctor uh, which patient has been appointed with which doctor and the date and the time of the appointment so for this definitely I need to first have this field as a primary key it's by default is a primary key and I want to make it identity column and let's say for example I want to make it is a doctor ID that is integer so that I know that which doctor is going to see that patient and I will make it patient ID so that through the ID I want to see the patient as well then appointment date let's say date time and although date time is enough so I can make it let's say time I can also make it time set but I will also make it date time for this we can change it according to our own uh, implementation so this is our uh, uh, database uh, which is that would be a central database and uh, it it is having the the doctor id and the patient id but uh, there are no foreign key constraints so i can add the foreign key constraint over here so foreign key table so the table is let's say doctor so i can specify the foreign key i can write it over here so i need to specify the foreign key column which is doctor id and this is the inside this doctor table the column is id so if we go and see that we have an id and uh, we have an id over here and that's how I can create a relationship I can add another constraint foreign key constraint and I want to make the foreign key constraint relationship with the a patient and uh, I can specify the column name over here which is patient ID and it's uh, it doesn't need to be case sensitive so patient like id is uh, in uppercase with uppercase in the database but i am specifying with the lowercase over here so patient id you see that it already picked and uh, underst understood that there is a patient table and it has an id field so one thing is that we must not forget to rename this table to appointment this is our uh, appointment table and now I will update this so updated successfully I will go here and I refresh and we have an appointment table over here with the uh, doctor and patient ID and appointment date and time uh, now we need to update our EDMX because we have done a lot of changes adding two more tables and also the relational table as well so I will just uh, add these two tables and I will finish so you see that uh, the patient table has been added and uh, the relationship also managed and you can also see the navigation property with the doctor and the patient and it has a back navigation property with the uh, appointments so that's how we can uh, create rel relational database uh, with the help of service based database file 
and I need to save this so that uh, it will generate the classes corresponding classes for this and also the relationship between the classes so let's see we will get something over here so now you see that we have appointment.cs and we also have a patient.cs and if we see the appointment.cs we have a relation with the doctor and the patient classes as well and we have the doctor id and the patient id and if i go and see the doctor uh, we have uh, a doctor have can have a collection of appointments because one doctor can have many collections but in the appointment one appointment uh, object would have the relationship with the one doctor or one the because only one doctor and one patient would be taking one appointment we are not handling the situation where several doctors would be looking uh, at the or the examining the patient so that's how we can uh, do this and now our uh, database has been updated and uh, let's see how we can do more things in that let's add some data in relational database uh, we have normalized and uh, we have a doctor id and patient id we have two doctors in the database and uh, also we have two patients only uh, having id 1 and 2 uh, we can make a relationship and add some uh, appointments let's say for example doctor 1 is having appointment with the patient 1 and uh, appointment date and time is uh, let's say for example uh, <coughs> and similarly doctor 1 is also having appointment with the patient uh, ID 1 and uh, it's having an appointment maybe tomorrow and similarly doctor 2 is having also an appointment with the patient 2 and that is on the next day So uh, these, these are some of the appointments, so let's add another doctor, doctor 3 and uh, he is, uh, he is uh, a gastrologist and uh, uh, third doctor is not having any appointment so let's see how we can represent this data in our application so i will uh, create another i will create another window to see the appointments so i will call it uh, wpf9 that is a relational db demonstration so i will also make it and add it in the app.xaml so that that is the first application or the window that should launch now i will add a uh, data grid so data grid is enough to represent and uh, demonstrate the data I can also make its size a bit uh, smaller so make it around uh, 500 that's enough and height is 350 is enough and I can name it and also the window startup location should be the center screen all right so i will now create the object of uh, entities that is hospital management db entities and uh, i'll create the object and now I want to show the appointments so we have a grid of appointments and say the item source 
in this case I am not writing any query I am just uh, showing all the appointments in the form of a list into the item source so let's run this so you see the ID of appointment appointments table and uh, the doctor ID and the patient ID we have appointment date and time was empty and we also have a navigation property which is pro telling us that it has a relationship with the doctor entity and the patient entity but maybe uh, we are not inter interested to see that um, so which means that I can change this and I can write uh, a query which is uh, from let's say appointments in db dot db dot appointments and in this case I will select new and uh, in uh, that I want to have a doctor ID and I want to have a patient ID and uh, I want to have an appointment date that's it I want these three properties and then I want to show the convert the result into list and I will run this now I should be able to see these three properties instead of having all the properties along with the relational uh, tables or entities as well so I just want to see these three so we have a doctor ID we have a patient ID now this is a normalized database we reduce the redundancy uh, to see the doctor details we need to go into the doctor table and get the doctor information to see the patient detail maybe the name in the contact number and maybe patient history and so on uh, we need to go into the patient table and uh, we see that which patient is at the ID 1 and which patient is at the ID 2 which doctor is at the ID 1 and 2 um, uh, to do this we need we have several options in uh, entity framework one is uh, SQL style joins and another is uh, navigation so we see that how we uh, display the data when we have a relational database and we have a normalized database if you recall we were having a navigation properties over here so which means that I can navigate from appointment to the doctor and from the doctor to the appointment right so if I go back into the code over here so uh, I'm just uh, looking at but I want to retrieve the doctor name and the patient name and maybe other details of the doctor and the patient so I can navigate from the appointment into the doctor and I can retrieve the information from uh, the doctor table or the entity so instead of showing IDs over here let's say for example I want to show the ID as well and I can navigate from the doctor so doctor is the collection itself and I can retrieve let's say for example the name of the doctor and I also want to show the specialization maybe and also from the uh, from the appointment I'm navigating to the patient and from the patient entity I want to retrieve the name of the patient and maybe contact number of the patient So I'm having a uh, error over here which is uh, anonymity error which means that it's uh, kind of anonymous and get confused because uh, this result will have two properties having name so I can rename them let's say for example I can call it doctor name and uh, let's say call it patient and now if I run this I must see all these in my columns
so we have doctor id now along with the doctor id we have the doctor name we have the specialization of that doctor we have the patient id and patient name and the appointment detail so uh, with the help of uh, navigation i can uh, display the data from all the joining tables in this case we have the appointment and doctor and the patient now another scenario could be that how about if i want to uh, see the outer join which means that i want to see all the doctors along with the appointment details because there are uh, more doctors as uh, compared to we have in the appointments so i can create another query over here let's say result outer doctor in this case we have uh, doctor as an outer table so i will select from d in uh, db dot doctors and i will uh, also select appointments in d dot appointments and there is a possibility that uh, there are some appointments which uh, are not appointed to a doctor which means that we want to select all the doctors but we also see the appointments and there is a possibility that there is no appointment object uh, corresponding with the doctor so in this case we will choose to have the default if empty which means we will having a null over here and then we will select new and with this selection i will select let's say for example uh, the name of the doctor and then maybe i want to select the appointment id so from the appointment i will select the id i also want to let's say for example see the patient as well so but first see the appointment date all right so we have the doctor name we have the appointment id and we the, we we are having the appointment date and now we are going to see the result from this collection you see we have an error over here which is a system in 32 error because we are converting into a null over here because uh, default is uh, null in c sharp it will uh, uh, put null where wherever it finds empty so for this i need to convert this id into a string this and i can say that uh, appointment appointment id so now this is the outer join where we see all the doctors and we have the appointment ids and where uh, this last doctor has no appointment and has no record in the appointment entity and uh, in this case we are having null and uh, we can use the outer join and the, in this case the outer table is the doctor table we can also along with this we can also see the let's say possible patient details so so uh, i cannot navigate directly uh, from doctor to the patient because there is no relationship uh, th there is no direct relationship between the doctor and the patient but there is a relationship between the doctor appointment and the patient so i can navigate from doctor to the appointment and from the appointment i can navigate to the doctor uh, to the patient so from here i can navigate to the appointments that is a collection and uh, in this case in this case uh, we have uh, sorry in this case we have the appointment and from the appointment i can navigate to the patient and from the patient i can navigate to the uh, uh, and get the name of the patient let's say for example i call it 
or rename it as a patient because they might create an anonymity over here so so i can navigate from the appointment to the patient so now we see the patient name over here as well and there is no appointment so therefore there is no patient name that is uh, assigned to this doctor because there is no patient id in uh, appointment against that doctor so that's how we can also uh, work with the outer join and we can also work with the inner join uh, with the help of navigation